One, <clears throat> in his 1907 essay, The Poet and Daydreaming, Freud draws the distinction between child's play, which can be out in the open, since the underlying fantasy, the wish to be big or grown up, doesn't merit censure, and its substitute, the fantasying that takes over in adolescence and withdraws omnipotence or creativity into a stronghold of privacy for wishes that are embarrassingly narcissistic, inartistic, and even antisocial. In his essay on fairy stories, J.R.R. Tolkien also plums the abyss of daydreaming for his new or renewed fantasy genre when he writes that not every fantasy is beautiful or even wholesome, not at any rate the fantasies of fallen man. Fallen man is, of course, the teenager, the pioneer of private fantasying. By grounding his fantasy genre in the fantasy that is true, the gospel, Tolkien obviates and makes obvious the need for a restraining order against our second nature as daydreamers, which philosophical ethics regularly issues. Freud got around the hot property of private fantasy or passed it along when he addressed daydreaming as the source and resource of the aspirations and resolutions of art, which, however, the artwork can never look back at or acknowledge. Freud's notion of the Zeitmarke, date mark, the indelible impress of the present moment that triggered the daydream that denies it, displaces the opposition between innocent and antisocial fantasying and schedules in the import of fantasy's historicization. The flight of waking fantasying takes a running start in an idealized past and jumps into the future of fulfillment. The date mark, however, means that there is a half-life to this itinerary and that fantasy as the genre of Dichtung, Freud's summary term for art, must admit, in lieu of the true symbol, the legibility of allegory. In The Creative Unconscious, Hans Sachs slowly but surely analyzes daydreaming as the evolutionary impetus and linchpin of the high cultural edifice. By making the counterintuitive move of privileging waking fantasy, although the night dream was the readily available analog for aesthetic experience, Sachs follows Freud, as does Tolkien, but Freud's close colleague picks up on a startling implication of the psychoanalytic poetics of daydreaming. Freud had shown that the daydream was a perfect composition, and even when tattered at the edges by forgetting and repression, its interpretation was the royal road to the unconscious. If dreaming and waking reality divide up the spoils of psychic life, then the night dream would be enough and art not necessary. But there is art because we are always going off alone with fantasying, prematurely flashing, upon, a, flashing on a figment without realization or endurance. There is art then to vouchsafe the evolution of the social relation, which is art out of the tight spot of wishing. 